untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white spirits deck as first suggested and then voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Hoffrey Ghostforge as our commander, the 5-mana 4-5 legendary dwarf cleric, says spirits we control get plus 1 plus 1 and have both trample and haste, and whenever another non-token creature we control dies, we exile it and create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's a spirit in addition to its other types, so it picks up those bonuses, and when this creature leaves the battlefield, we return the exiled card to its owner's graveyard. So Hoffrey has a ton of different synergies across the board, of course plays well with other spirits, which will pick up that bonus right away, plays well with creatures that have good enter the battlefield abilities, so we can maybe replicate them with Hoffrey, and then also plays well with creatures that can sacrifice themselves so we can get immediate value by turning them into their spirit forms. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with our creatures, where at one mana we've got a bunch of ways to maybe protect Hoffrey, including the Alsade of Life's Bounty, which we can sacrifice for one mana to give a creature or enchantment we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. We've got a Dauntless Bodyguard, which we want to play after playing Hoffrey, so we can sacrifice a Bodyguard and give Hoffrey indestructible until end of turn. And then Selfless Savior, probably the best of the bunch, as we can play it preemptively, play Hoffrey on curve, and then sacrifice our Savior to make a creature indestructible until end of turn, and get a nice Spirit Savior in return. Then there's Stonebinder's Familiar, a 1-1 Spirit Dog, saying whenever one or more cards are put into exile during our turn, we can put a plus one counter on it, only triggers once each turn. And there's a ton of ways to trigger the Familiar outside of Hoffrey, which can also grow the Familiar. We've got Thraben Inspector, a 1-2 that when it enters a battlefield can generate a clue token which we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card. We also have a few ways of flickering our creatures to maybe re-enable those enter a battlefield abilities. And then Usher of the Fallen, a 2-1 spirit that can boast for 2 mana to make a 1-1 token. And Hope of Girapur, a 1-1 flyer that when it deals combat damage to the opponent, we can sacrifice it, and then the opponent's unable to cast non-creature spells until our next turn, so also plays well with Hoffrey. At 2 mana there's Bounty Agent, a 2-2 with Vigilance that can tap and sacrifice to destroy targets a legendary permanent that's either an artifact, creature or enchantment. Cathar Commando can sacrifice for 1 mana to destroy an artifact or enchantment. Clarion Spirit generates additional 1-1 spirit tokens with flying whenever we cast our second spell each turn. There's Eidolon of Obstruction, a 2-1 spirit with first strike, making loyalty abilities of opposing planeswalkers one more expensive to activate. Intrepid Adversary just a good curve topper that can maybe pump our team. Loyal Warhound a 3-1 with Vigilance that when it enters can search up a planes to put on the battlefield tapped if the opponent controls more lands than we do. We've got Remorseful Cleric, a 2-1 spirit with flying that can be sacrificed to exile target player's graveyard. The Unicorn can be sacrificed to destroy target enchantment. And Crater Maker can be sacrificed for 1 mana to either deal 2 damage to target creature or destroy target colorless non-land permanent. Then at 3 mana there's Angel of Eternal Dawn, which can punish ramp strategies. Blade Splicer is joined by a 3-3 Golem, and Golems we control have First Strike. Elite Spellbinder a 3-1 Flyer, that when it enters can look at the opponent's hand, exile a non-land card from it, that will be too more expensive to play. Hanged Executioner a 1-1 Spirit with Flying, joined by another 1-1 Spirit with Flying, and we can pay 4 mana to exile the Executioner to exile target creature. The Moonblast Cleric, a 3-2 that can search up an enchantment and put it on top of our deck, and we've got some powerful enchantments to search up in this deck. Pilgrim of the Ages, a 2-1 that can find a planes to put into our hand, also a spirit. Priest of Ancient Lore, a 2-1 that gains a life and draws a card when it enters. Guardian of Faith, a 3-2 spirit that we can flash in to protect our team from a sweeper effect, including our tokens, by phasing them out. We've got Catilda that becomes larger with the number of enchantments and spirits we control, and then has lifelink flying protection from vampires, and can also be disturbed out of the graveyard in enchantment form. There's a Ranger Captain of Eos, a 3-3, that can be sacrificed to prevent the opponent from casting non-creature spells this turn, usually want to sacrifice it in the opponent's upkeep, and when it enters a battlefield we can search our library for a creature card with mana value 1 or less, reveal it and put it into our hand, so it can maybe find a selfless savior, and then both have good synergy with Hoffrey. There's Skyclave Apparition as a spirit that can act as removal. Venerable Warsinger, another spirit that can return creatures from our graveyard if it hits the opponent. 
Faceless Agent, a changeling, so it has all creature types, including spirit, and when it enters a battlefield, we seek a creature card of the most prevalent creature type in our library, so that's typically going to be either spirit or human. At 4 mana, there's Inquisitor Captain as a new alchemy card, 3-3 three, three with Vigilance, that when it enters can find another creature with mana value 3 or less to put in play. Ranger of Eos, a 3-2 that when it enters can find two different 1-drops to put into our hand. Irregular Cohort, a 2-2 Changeling making another 2-2 Changeling token, so those are both also spirits. We've got Town Racer Tyrant from Alchemy, a 4-4 flyer that when it enters can curse one of the opponent's lands by making them sacrifice it unless it deals 2 damage to them each turn. We've got Blade Historian giving our team double strike when we attack. We've got Solemn, which can find a land when it enters, helping us ramp, and when it dies, can draw a card as well. And then at 5 mana, there's Quintorius, giving our spirits one additional power, and whenever one or more cards leave our graveyard, we create a 3-2 red and white spirit creature token, also plays very well with Hoffrey. There's Terror of the Peaks, a 5-4 dragon with flying, and whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target, so it can also be quite devastating if we can maybe wipe the board with Terror of the Peaks and a bunch of creatures in play alongside Hoffrey, as all creatures will come back and trigger Terror of the Peaks. There's Glorybringer, a 4-4 dragon with flying and haste, that can exert to deal 4 damage to a non-dragon creature, just a good card in general, and can also maybe be flickered, so we can still untap it and keep using the exert ability. There's Cavalier of Dawn, a 4-6 with vigilance, that when it enters can destroy up to 1 target's non-land permanent and replace it with a 3-3 golem token. Sometimes it might be beneficial to destroy our own permanence to get the golem token and maybe re-trigger an ETB effect if we control Hoffrey. And when the Cavalier dies we can return an artifact or enchantment from our graveyard to our hand. Then there's Combustible Gearhulk, a 6-6 artifact creature with first strike, that when it enters a battlefield usually will mill the top 3 cards of our library, and then deal damage to the opponent equal to the total mana value of the milled cards. And then return Pass Caller, a 4-2 spirit with flying, that when it enters can return target spirit, instant or sorcery from our graveyard to our hand, can set up some powerful recursion loops. And Soul of Migration we can evoke for 4 mana, quite synergistic if we have Hoffrey out, as when it enters a battlefield it creates two 1-1 one, one white bird creature tokens with flying. So if we evoke it, we basically sacrifice it right away, make two birds, it comes back in spirit form, making two birds once again. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, we've got some very good removal with a Lightning Bolt, Swords to Plowshares, and then a 2 mana Lightning Helix and Rip Apart, which can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker or destroy target artifact or enchantment. We've got some mana ramp with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. And then a couple sweepers as well, including a Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, and even Cleansing Nova, which can destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. And as we mentioned, sometimes it can be beneficial to blow up our entire board if we control Hoffrey, just to re-enable a bunch of ETB abilities. Then we've got some cool enchantments, including Anointed Procession, which doubles the amount of tokens we generate, so that also includes the tokens we get from Hoffrey. Teleportation Circle can flicker one of our creatures each turn, good for re-enabling those Enter the Battlefield abilities. And then Showdown of the Skulls can provide a ton of card advantage by exiling the top 4 cards. And then at 5 mana we also have Lorehold Command, which has a ton of different modes, including making a 3-2 Spirit token at instant speed, giving our team indestructible and plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and maybe sacrificing a permanent to draw 2, also good with Hoffrey, and also has the Lightning Helix mode. And then there's Elspeth Conquers Death to exile expensive permanents and then reanimate a creature or planeswalker. And the only planeswalker in the deck is Ugin the Ineffable, which can generate spirit tokens with the plus one and destroy colored permanents with the minus three. And then a mana base, very simple, a few creature lands including Cave of the Frost Dragon and Den of the Bugbear. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play facing Prime Speaker Vanifar. So it is quite important that we have removal for Prime Speaker, since otherwise that can threaten to combo off. And I do have a Hanged Executioner, which is not the fastest answer, but I guess we can play turn 3 and then activate turn 4 maybe. I'll try it. And hope the opponent doesn't have too much ramp here to play turn 3 Vanifar. They could also have some ways to protect her. 
Right, so no mana creature it looks like. It's going to be a once upon a time first. Can maybe find a, an accelerant here. Instead, Hydroid Crisis. Okay, play Executioner. And Usher. There's a Vitalist, a turn late. Okay, so I could already play Hoffrey and start attacking. Blue Green not gonna have too much in the way of removal for a 4 5 creature. They might have some fight spells, but I doubt it. More likely to have ways of bouncing Hoffrey. Thrag Tusk, not bad. So for now, what do I want to get with Ranger? Could get Selfless Savior. Could play Faceless Agent first. Don't really want to use Executioner on Thractus because then I'm out of answers for Prime Speaker. So maybe we'll kick things off with Faceless Agent. Finding Entrapped Adversary, not bad. And I can still play a Ranger Captain. And probably go for Selfless Savior here. Seems okay. And we can attack with everyone, including Agent, which is a Hasty Spirit. But Hoffrey can stay back. Probably no need to sacrifice Ranger Captain, given that our opponent's playing mostly creatures. Although it would be a way to re-trigger the Ranger Captain, so it wouldn't necessarily be a bad activation here in the opponent's upkeep. So might as well go for it. And then get a different one drop. Maybe Thraben Inspector or Dauntless Bodyguard. So I'll say to maybe make some creatures unblockable with the protection could also be useful. So our opponent can only cast creatures here. If they go for Vanifar, we might have it covered with Hanged Executioner, assuming there's no protection. Plus we can just play a huge Intrepid Adversary to pump the team. And most of our creatures trample, so that's going to put the opponent in an awkward spot. Right, goes for Hydroid Crisis for 4. So our opponent's at 18, 2 blockers. And our turn's going to be pretty straightforward. Play a Selfless Savior. I might even sacrifice it right now to turn it into a Spirit. And then play this. And we can pay twice and smash all right and that's good enough on to the next one all right we're on the play facing sir conrad the grim my hand a little bit land light got enchantment removal a plenty but overall, my hand leaves a lot to be desired. This seems a little better. Missing double rat for Tyrant. Hopefully we can pick that up. But some nice reset buttons with Cleansing Nova too. And then play this one tapped. And hope for some mana fixing and ramp. Stitcher Supplier to fill the graveyard. So they might have a reanimation angle. Take one. And there's my double rent for next turn. And then probably target Seether Castle or Hive.
funeral rites to draw two. And we'll go with Hive over Castle since our opponent's not lacking cards in hand. So our opponent's probably gonna take two damage. Probably don't want to play Hoffrey just yet. Cavalier doesn't want to destroy Stitcher Supplier, so that leaves us kind of in an awkward spot. I would like to get Hope of Girapur out so we can maybe protect Hoffrey. But if I want to play Hope, I can't do anything else. Can't even activate Denon attack, which might otherwise be the play here. Yeah, I think we just fire up our creature lands. And then... We can maybe still wipe the board with Cleansing Nova before committing more to the board. If they play Sir Conrad, Cavalier can take care of it. Alright, there's Sir Conrad. And sure, that seems fine. Could also destroy my Goblin token, make a 3-3, but Conrad seems more threatening. And play Hope. And maybe next turn we're in a better position to play Hoffrey, especially if our opponent's tapped out. Can play Hoffrey and then attack and sacrifice Hope. So we get an extra Spirit version. So our opponent down to 13. A lot of damage dealt by the Hive, which they want to keep in play. Opponents looking through their graveyard. Not too many big creatures to reanimate. It's gonna be a Clockwork Servant drawing a card. And Ominous Traveler from Alchemy. Okay. Also have the option of casting Cleansing Nova, destroying all Artifacts and enchantments just to deal with the Golem and Servants. Would also destroy Hope of Girapur, but can maybe sacrifice it first. Ooh, Combustible Gearhulk's a nice one too. Still sort of liking the Hoffrey play here. So, we'll play Hoffrey. Attack with both Hope and Cavalier, which will take out at least two creatures and then come back, destroying maybe our own Goblin token. Opponent's just gonna chump. But by sacking Hope, they won't be able to cast any reanimation spell here. And still feel okay playing the planes. So our opponent could still play instant speed removal in our turn to deal with Hoffrey. But there is hope of Garapur preventing non-creature spells in their turn at least. Dominating Vampire can steal my hope of Garapur, which can sacrifice itself. Not that we wanted to cast any non-creature spells here. But yeah, that's a nice answer. And then two mana left. So for now, probably attack with Cavalier, play Combustible Gearhulk. But I suspect our opponent's holding some removal for Hoffrey. So do we still want to make this attack if they can kill Hoffrey at instant speed? It's not a great attack. Especially considering we have a Cleansing Nova to deal with artifacts, but Gearhulk's also an artifact here. So I'll go for the attack anyway. 
Hoffrey gets price of famed. And our opponent goes for the double block, take out the actual creature. And I can return Hope of Girapur, which is convenient. So, play Gear Hulk. See what our opponent chooses here. Small chance we can kill him if they take the damage, but... Opponent takes it, ends up taking five, so not bad. Play Hope. So, opponent's life total is dwindling. They did end up sacrificing that land last turn. Still six mana to work with. And a Call of the Death Dweller. Gonna steal my Hope of Girapur once again. Alright, this is getting annoying. But we can maybe replay Hoffrey or go for a Faceless Agent next turn. So maybe would have benefited from just killing the Golem last turn instead of the Dominating Vampire. Replace Traveler. Okay. At least our Gearhulk can keep attacking. And then I can replay Hoffrey or go for Faceless Agent plus whatever we find, which might be better. Guardian of Faith could certainly come in handy. Opponent's gonna chump. And maybe a village rides here to sacrifice too. Bloodsworn Squire resolves. Do I want to flash in a Guardian of Faith? Would we'll turn into a Trampler once we play Hoffrey. Guess I can double block and play Guardian. Just to prevent a bit of damage. Ooh, Intrepid Adversary. Our opponent still has two mana available. Can certainly count on them having more instant speed removal. The Squire can pay two mana, two cane indestructible. So what if I do play the adversary? Can pay three times. So that would be a pretty powerful attack. If they kill adversary, they can't activate Squire, and then. Attacking with the Gear Hulk and Guardian would still be reasonable. Hmm, close call. Could also play Adversary Pump once and then still activate Den of the Bugbear. Is that better, perhaps? Kind of like that idea, actually. If we assume the opponent can remove Adversary here. So team gets plus one plus one, and made then. They could just kill Gear Hulk. They could kill Adversary. But I think most options are fine. Opponent going for the trades. But if they don't have removal, they would still be dead here. Alright, they're going for Adversary. Get to draw a card at least. And 
And our opponent's still at 1. So now Teleportation Circle on Gearhawk will force the opponent to let us draw 3 cards. Which seems pretty powerful. Hoffrey can give Guardian and Faceless Agent plus 1 and Trample. Which can also maybe carry us across the finish line. So we're not in bad shape. Ooh, a gruesome menagerie can return three creatures here potentially. We know if they had a stitcher supplier for one mana. And then for two mana, maybe a fen lurker or another ominous traveler. So it's gonna get full value. So probably hang on to teleportation circle. And hope Flickering Gearhulk can uh, get there. If I play Hoffrey right now, I have 7 points of Trample. Plus 2 additional attackers. So block, block. And then they would survive. So let me start with Priest, see what we pick up. Ooh, a Blade Historian. That's gonna be good too. Now do I just send a team, or do I still flicker Gearhulk? Gearhulk can attack. Yeah, it's possible Blade Historian's good enough here, but I kind of want to flicker Gearhulk, so we'll just send that one. Put on chumps. Flicker Gearhulk, and we'll probably get to draw three unless our opponent's feeling lucky. Okay. So Blade Splicer, not her good flicker targets. And the game goes on. Honored Heirloom. That's fine. Four mana left. Opponent's still a precarious one life. Plays a Draugr Necromancer. Okay, so three, four, five attackers. If I play Hoffrey, then two of my creatures gain trample. But they can still soak that up. Although they would be forced to put Necromancer on Guardian. And then um, they would lose a Necromancer. Or we can just go with Blade Historian here. Seems a little bit better. Attack. Opponent has to block my entire team. And they will lose the Necromancer in the process. We get to have more flicker fun with Teleportation Circle. And a Lightning Bolt will end our opponent's misery. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Clothus. Which can hate on our graveyard, but that doesn't really matter with Hoffrey. I do like the early Helix. Warhound might get some value. So this hand seems acceptable. Clarion Spirits also not bad. And Putin might be a land destruction deck as we see a memorial here. Paradise Roots, I wouldn't be able to Helix. So for now, Clarion Spirits. And maybe next turn play Warhound. Get an extra land. Or we could play a Spellbinder first. Check out the opponent's hand. Dryad is going to make it easy to enable Warhound. As your opponent gets to play an extra land. 
and the Arboreal Grazer can put an extra land in play, but it looks like they're out. Okay. So I guess playing Spellbinder here, check out their hand, and then next turn we can double spell Warhound and Helix. And Elder Gergroth, probably something we want to delay. So we might see Cinder Vines plus Clothis. And probably fine to take four. Selfless Savior, not bad. Although there's no removal we're too afraid of here. So I don't necessarily have to play Savior first. Lightning Helix could kill Paradise Druids. This would lose a Devotion, so it would no longer be a creature. And I also get to trigger Clarion Spirit, so that seems worth it. Could have played Warhound first, but opponent still has more lands than we do. And we'll hit with Spellbinder. Alright, so next turn could play Hoffrey. Even better if we find another land so we can play Savior first. Opponent is fetching. Clothis triggers. So they can make one more mana. And, ooh, a Fire Emancipation. That is a problem. We do have a Cavalier, which can destroy enchantments too. This is going to deal 12 damage, so probably want to chump. And Clothis' ability also going to deal a ton of damage here. So probably worth it to take care of that Emancipation while we can. And Spellbinder can still attack. Dragonfire deals with my Clarion Spirit, that's okay. And I get to play Savior plus Hoffrey. I guess my return pass caller is not going to be all that exciting here with Clothis exiling my graveyard. And the Moonblast Cleric could be quite amazing too here. And does Cavalier want to attack? Sure, why not? Now there is a Cinder Vines which can blow up whatever enchantment I search up. So we'll have to be strategic about it. Once Gergroth shows up... I'm gonna have a harder time attacking, but still one mana away. So what's the plan for now? Can attack with a few creatures if I'm willing to sacrifice Selfless Savior. Opponent takes it. And I guess Pass Caller with Haste could also deal quite a bit of damage here. Moonblast Cleric can find an enchantment. Could maybe go for Conqueror's Death or Showdown of the Skulls, which we don't really care if they destroy it with the Cinder Vines. Even the Alsaid could be good. So, I guess we'll go with the Showdown and play my lands and pass. And then I have the option of playing a big, hasty, trampling pass caller. Or we can play Showdown. And our opponent's seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Lurus. Not as companion, but as commander, so they are allowed to play more expensive spells as well. 
And we've got several answers to lures between Bounty Agent, Skyclave, and Helix, so kind of like this. Gotta hope for a couple more lanes. Cohort can deal quite a bit of damage with Hoffrey. It's gonna be a Priest of Forgotten Gods. I could Lightning Helix that before they get a chance to play a couple creatures here. Yeah, and then next turn I can play maybe a tapped Fable Passage alongside Bounty Agent to try and deal with Lurus. It's gonna be a tapped land for now. And a Dusk Legion Zealots. Okay. So we'll stick to the plan. Probably don't want to trade Alsade for Zealots. And this will fetch up a plains to give access to most of our author cards. So point's probably going to look to answer Bounty Agent before deploying Lurus. But we do have several answers lined up. Farmhand gets a plains. And Implement of Malice can make me discard. Okay. So lots of cards to potentially recur with their commander. They're probably looking to play Lurus and something out of the graveyard in the same turn to get immediate value. And we're gonna try and stop them. So we'll fetch. Pilgrim can find an extra planes. And then do I want to trade Bounty Agent for two 1-1s? One I don't think so. I suppose if I get the planes first, I can basically trade Alsade for uh, both their 1-1s. One that might be worth it. And then we still have Skyclave as an extra answer. Could have tried to save Alsate to eventually protect Hoffrey, but given that we only have four lanes, that's going to be a while before we can set that up. Implements makes me discard. And get rid of probably a Guardian of Faith. It's going to be a Basri into Bodyguard, which now gets a counter. I will guard your advance. So the fact that Bodyguard can come back to protect Lurus is an extra reason to hang on to Skyclave Apparition. And this gets to untap. So I could play Hoffrey before attacking Basri with both. Yeah, that seems reasonable. That way I get to bring back my Bounty Agent if it trades. And the Pilgrim tramples. Our opponent accepts the trade. That works. Bounty Agent is back. Can even activate it right away thanks to the haste on Hoffrey. And there's Lurus. So in response to them playing their uh, bodyguard, I could even sacrifice my agent. And then they might have a 1 mana protection spell, and then hopefully Skyclave can still clean up. But nope, looks like Bounty Agent gets the job done, thanks to the haste from Hoffrey. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, facing off against the Vadric, and having a one mana answer is nice. So this hand seems keepable, assuming we can pick up an extra white source, which we have a lot of in the deck. Try and not give away that we're holding lightning bolts by passing quickly. I guess Baral's worth killing too here. And then Crater Maker still threatens to deal with Vadric. Haven't picked up our second white yet. So that could be an issue. Celestus for now. We could also destroy with Crater Maker. But I'm more threatened by Vadric than Celestus, I think. It's a close call. I'll let him untap. And then really needs white mana here. Opponent can find any instant or sorcery. Might get a protection spell for Vadric. In which case I might just blow up Celestus. Gets Behold the Multiverse instead. Okay. They could foretell that. And I'll hang on to Crater Maker for the additional pressure. Okay, land is good. And then now could go with the Ranger Captain. Which can certainly come in handy. Preventing the opponent from casting non-creature spells. Could even get a Hope of Girapur here, which we can still cast. And then... Don't really want to sack Captain without Hoffrey in play. Are we afraid of a sweeper is the question. Because if I play Hope and I'm tapped out... Then... Um, of course the sweeper would be disastrous. Or I can keep up Crater Maker to maybe deal with the Celestis at the very least. I think we go for it and... Hope there's no sweeper. Might have seen a sweeper last turn if they had one. So behold, could still find a 3 mana sweeper potentially. And then we're really hoping for land 5 for Hoffrey here. Fight with fire kills Ranger Captain, might as well sacrifice it. And Inquisitor Captain the draw. So still no Hoffrey mana. But we can uh, attack and maybe Inquisitor first, see what we pick up. And I might end up sacrificing Hope of Girapur. Selfless Savior seems like a good one to have. Uh, so we can keep up the pressure. Opponents won't be able to cast any sweepers here. And hopefully in the next turn I can resolve Hoffrey. Although Counterspell would still be quite effective, the fact that our opponent discarded this Daneful Stroke is probably a sign they're holding more permission spells. So I think I start by attacking and then might go for Catilda here. And then if our opponent does have a board wipe, I can save one creature, plus I can destroy the Celestis. Time for Vadric. Which I could try to destroy with Crater Maker. The fact that they're doing this probably implies that they have some sort of protection in place. But I think I'm still tempted to deal two damage here. What's the alternative? Opponent gets to kind of go off here. Cast more spells. And then 
I have a, an extra attacker for next turn. Think I gotta go for it and hope there's no protection. Electro dominance for one. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. Got there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play facing Erebos Blackhearted. My hand is acceptable. Got some early pressure. Can maybe deal with an enchantment. And at least one removal spell. And then I'm happy if we pick up more lanes. If we find more spells, we should be able to cast most of them. And then turn two, I can either boast or flash in commando. I think the added pressure from commando might be worth it. Even though we maybe give up the opportunity to destroy an enchantment later if they can deal with it. So, get in for two. And pass it back. Meyer Triton, find target for bolts. So we can bolt and boost. And then next turn, don't have much going on, can boast again perhaps. Ayara. And it's three Devotion, so would have been an even better target for Bolt. Can almost turn on Erebos by itself. So, yeah, this is not ideal. Commando attacks. And we get to Scry at least. Thraben Inspector. Not what I need right now. So next turn I could play Hoffrey, which would pump Usher as well. Opponent's going to pass with 4 mana up, so have to expect some instant speed removal here. So I don't want to commit Hoffrey to the board necessarily. Conqueror's Death, clean answer for Ayara. Even though it could also answer Erebos, but Erebos doesn't do much if it's not a creature, so... I think uh, Conqueror's Death is fine. Might see removal on Commando instead now. We also have to watch out for Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Could mess with the third chapter of Conqueror's Death. Alright. What's next? Five mana. If they have a Sweeper, they might want to go for it now, before the second chapter of Conqueror's Death makes it more expensive. And there's a Crux of Fate. Can untap and play Ugin M+. Plus. That seems okay. And then if our opponent can destroy Ugin without exiling it, Conqueror's Death can still bring it back. Cavalier could be a nice one to eventually get access to. And then I get back probably Usher, actually, since that will gain haste from Hoffrey, which I'm going to play at this point. This can plus. And there's a lot of damage incoming. For one mana, they won't be able to deal with Hoffrey at least. And we can even boast with Usher. Ooh, a dark ritual into instant speed removal, maybe. Alright, deals with Ugin instead of Hoffrey, at least. But now a sweeper could maybe be problematic. I guess I would still get my Usher back. Chupacabra kills Hoffrey, but they're still too far behind, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. 
All right, so we got to see our Hoffrey deck in action. Got to see quite a few Spirit Synergies. Maybe didn't get to return as many creatures with Hoffrey's ability as I would have liked, but that's also the challenge of building around a 5-mana creature that doesn't necessarily have an Enters a Battlefield ability. So that's also why being able to sacrifice creatures instantly, like Ranger Captain of Eos or Selfless Savior, have such good synergy with our commander. So those are kind of the synergies you want to work towards, besides just including a few good Spirits as well. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.